Welcome to an NCIX Tech Tips exclusive from the Microsoft Device Gallery here in their booth. So, I mean, what's the beauty of the Microsoft ecosystem? Well, I think personally, one of the big things for me is the fact that you've got such a wide variety of solutions that can be enabled through Microsoft software. So we've got everything from what looks like sort of your more standard tablet, this is the Elite Pad 900 from HP, to some more unique designs, like you can see what this gentleman's playing with right here. Check out how intuitive that is. He figured it out in like two seconds. So this is MSI's S220. This is a slider and it actually goes all the way from being a full-fledged tablet to being a full-fledged... Hey, look at that. We're going to get a great demo from our special guest presenter here. So that's the S20. Then there are some other unique solutions moving on down here. So this one was just introduced here at the show. This is the Acer W3. So this is actually using an Intel processor. This is an 8.1 inch tablet and what's cool about it is this is the first time we We've seen this in an 8-inch form factor, something running Windows 8. It runs a full-blown edition of Windows 8. And one of the unique things that Acer has done with this device is in some regions it's actually going to be shipping with a keyboard and it comes with the full Microsoft Office suite, making it awesome for productivity as well as for portability. Now there's some cool stuff on display here that I've personally never seen before. Dell I'm obviously pretty familiar with, but we're going to go around that way and have a look at this Koopa device right here. So this, contrary to what you might think, is not actually made by Nintendo. It's a brand that's mostly focused on China that builds business grade devices. So this one right here is a tablet slash laptop, so you can actually disconnect the top tablet piece from the laptop. It has a built-in stylus allowing you to, I actually don't know how to remove this, but I saw someone do it, so I'm pretty sure there's a way. Let's uh, see if we can figure that out. There we go. So the stylus is removable, and I'll get my lovely assistant here to just go ahead and uh, show us how I go. Oh, look at that. I figured it out this time. So you can choose to use it either as a stylus touchpad, or you can actually use it just as a regular tablet because it does detach from the base, which is, ah, yes. Thank you very much for that. Cool thing about this, again, more business features. When's the last time you guys saw a tablet with a fingerprint scanner? Can you do that on your iPad? I don't think so. I don't think they have an app for that. So let's go ahead and move over here where we're seeing some of the more unique devices as well. So these are all running Windows 8. So that's cool because you can go all the way from a regular tablet, a little tiny tablet, all the way up to full-blown notebooks and pretty much everything in between. So this is a design, the U21M from Gigabyte, that shows off how you can create all kinds of unique hinge designs in order to enable people to take advantage, it's hard to do this with one hand, of these Ah, there we go, of these functionalities. So this one right here we have checked out before. This is the Yoga 11, and this is another approach to the notebook slash tablet design idea where you've got the notebook this way, you flip the whole thing around, and boom, all of a sudden it's a tablet. The cool thing about this one is it actually disables the keyboard on the back when you flip it open, meaning that you don't accidentally mash the keys and type a whole bunch of things when you're just trying to use it as a touchscreen device. Now, when Kinect first launched for Xbox 360, we kind of looked at it and went, okay, so you can play dancing games, that's kind of cool, but maybe there's a broader application for this. So this is Kinect for Windows. It comes with a different connector, so obviously it's meant for you to actually connect it, and this is going to get confusing. Kinect and Connect are different things. You can connect it to your computer and do a number of very interesting things through the software kits that Microsoft is providing that are aimed at a few different applications. So the one that they're demoing right here in real time is Master Chief standing on a rock, and this is being built in real time this model right here is being built by this Kinect device that's hooked up to an ASUS machine and pointing at this spinning Master Chief. Now I'm going to show you guys, I'm going to prove this is in real time because I'm going to break their demo just like I did when I was getting briefed on it. If I stick my arm in here, you're going to see on the screen that the software that's building this model is going to pick up my arm right there. So what's the application of this? Imagine if you're a game developer and you no longer have to actually draw from scratch anything that you want to have appear in your game. You're like, oh, well I want to have a water bottle in my game. I guess I'll just put it on my little pedestal, take a 3D image of it, and then I can just skin the thing. That's pretty cool. Now imagine a world where you can buy a 3D printer. Okay, so that's today. Now imagine a world where you can buy a 3D scanner. Okay, so that's coming very soon. What if I could just scan something and instead of actually making my mom a little vase for Mother's Day, I can just scan one and print it out. 
That'd be kind of cool. It's coming very, very soon. And imagine the applications of this for something like, I don't know, shopping online for clothing. Right now, clothing is one of the most difficult things to shop for on the internet because sizing is ridiculous. I'm over in Asia right now. If I bought a medium here, I'd be like, It'd be like this on me. Whereas if I buy a medium at home, it's, well, well, you're looking at a medium from home. So this is just scratching the surface, guys. This entire row of things here has applications for this all the way from things like rehabilitation to fitness. And of course, the things that we've talked about already, the future is looking very bright for the technology that was introduced as a gaming platform, but as we can see, goes much deeper than that. As a bit of a wrap up at the Microsoft booth, we're gonna talk about Office 365. Now, of course, Office 365 isn't completely new, but I'll give you guys a refresher in case you haven't watched the video that we've done before on this channel. Office 365 is a subscription-based service that makes sure of a couple things. Number one is you have a way to sync all of your data with cloud storage. Number two is you're never gonna have a version of Microsoft Office that is out of date. And number three is you don't have to deal with the upfront high purchase price of the software. Now, for our video production work, that, uh, that I work on, we've actually recently upgraded to Adobe Creative Cloud versus the more traditional approach. And the reason we did that is because of not worrying about versions, deployment, and the ability to share files internally. So if you rely on Microsoft Office a lot for your organization, then something like this might be quite useful. Now, they're not focusing necessarily just on the Microsoft Office messaging, but also the devices that are enabled by it. So this is just a normal notebook, but you're not limited to using Microsoft just on notebooks and desktop PCs anymore. So right over here, you can see Dell's flip around notebook design that we've actually been seeing a fair bit of here at the show because it is such a cool approach to converting between a notebook, so there you go, that's what it'll normally look like, and a more tablet-like experience in both of which you will not have any difficulty using Microsoft Office. Don't forget to subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips for more videos like this from your favorite retailer, NCIX.com.